Hello, my peeps, and welcome back to Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves. I am still your host, Ike, and before I get too excited, I'd like to just take a moment and say thanks for being here and giving this pot a listen. It really does mean a lot that you chose to use your precious time, and I mean that. Time is precious. It's finite. We only get so much. We cannot buy more. And you gave it to me and my guest via your earballs. That's awesome. Thank you. Now, if after all this awesomeness, if you still have any awesomeness left, it'd be really cool if you shared this with someone who you think would like it. Or just subscribe yourself if you already have it. That'd be cool. If you want to ask me any questions or you think you know of a great guest, or just want to chit-chat, hit me up on Twitter at twitter.com backslash like Ikes, or email me at passionandpeevespodcast at gmail.com. Perhaps you'd like to know how I survived Tropical Storm Hillary and the earthquake that preceded it. It didn't really actually affect me at all. My phone thought I was going to die. It went off a million times being like, get out, get out, warning, warning. And then nothing happened. It was literally like not even April weather level of rain. It was like kind of some. I could have walked around probably and not gotten soaked without an umbrella. If I just took out like a, a jacket, I'd probably been fine. So sorry that of those of you in the LA and surrounding areas that were affected or in Nevada, as it goes up through, I think kind of my hometown of Fallon or near there, you know, watch out, be safe, be careful, be safe. And I hope it, you know, you have a similar experience of it kind of passing you by, but you know, if not, then not anyway, please be careful. Please be safe. Hopefully my fingers are crossed for you and that you have a similar experience such as mine. Uh, also in similar experiences, I got today off. I think it was paid. I hope it was paid, but I got today off because of the concern. So Yahtzee, uh, yeah, everything's coming up Millhouse. Um, so also for those of you that <laughs> I hope those of you that were affected all at least got that. Um, speaking of work though, I just went through my first week and it was great. Uh, I got to help out with some tech, which was kind of a nice little fun thing. I almost got to kind of like use my degree a little bit and doing a little bit of like micro programming adjustments to uh, digital instruments. All I, some of the stuff I did when I was um, doing post work on a friend's finals project in my first year at university studying film. That was really cool. Um, and also found out getting new perks, which thanks boss. That was awesome. You didn't have to love it all the same. For instance, one of the perks is that uh, we get money for phones if we use them for work, which, you know message my boss, get texts from my boss. I use it for work. So, uh, got a new phone. That's freaking awesome. Needed one. I haven't, last time I got a phone was 2017. Been a minute. Every time I would turn it off and turn it back on, I would have to deal with this whole rigmarole of calming the phone down that it wasn't about to die. And now, uh, it's going to die because I'm going to throw it out of at least a second story window. Just kidding. Probably not. It actually still works fine. So I'm probably going to have it as a backup. Um, but Got that. Got some other fantastic goodies that I am immediately utilizing. Not that they're going to run out of style, but, you know, hey, I needed that. Sweet. So not only got to work, got to do that. Don't have to teach middle school anymore. Don't know if I just said that before or not, but, you know, it, this really is everything's coming at Millhouse. It's pretty dope. Um, Speaking of new phone, very much kind of weird when you're so, I don't know about y'all, but like when you're so used to an item, whether it's a phone, whether it's a car, whether it's whatever, and you change it, it is a very unique experience, right? Like it has been so weird being like, Oh, like I'm looking for on my old phone. There is a back button, if you will, that was located in the bottom, right. And I find my thumb just going there instinctively. And that's not where it is on my new phone. It's on the top left. I'm like, Oh, let's do this thing. <laughs> and so it's very much like learning to ride a different tricycle uh but getting used to it enjoying the fact that it doesn't suck and you know hopefully has a bit longer battery life i don't know need a new one got a new one basically not having to pay for it whoop, whoop. speaking of whoop, whoop, this week we've got martina macy for episode number sace 
This is actually a wreck of a wreck. I don't know if that's happened before. I'm sure it has, but this is one that I I know the wrecks. Uh, this was, I believe, Gabriel Sedgemore in season one, I want to say. Is it season one? I think it was season two, actually. Now I'm looking through the notes. Gabe, 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 Gabriel. Gabriel Sedgemore was season two. And immediately after, wow, I didn't realize it was that soon. Uh, we had Emma Westman come on, which both fantastic guests. Love them to death. I hope you guys listen to this. And then Emma had recommended some people. And Emma and Gabe. And most anybody that comes on here, I'm always excited to hear who their ex were. And it, one of them was Martina Macy, our guest today. And through life and who there, whatnot, couldn't really make it happen until recently. So long overdue, fantastic episode with Martina Macy. Take it away, past self. All right, folks. Today, my guest has crossed Lake Michigan three times tip to tip in a sailboat quit her job and drove across the country just to touch the Pacific and has also circled Lake Michigan four times in a wheeled vehicle. It's Martina Macy. (laughs) Hi. Hello, hello. Uh, tis me. <laughs> Indeed, it is you. And uh, tis time that we know what decision in your life are you most proud of making? Hmm. Let's see. Probably. Probably seeking treatment when I needed it. Hell yeah. 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 Knowing when to ask for, for help. Yeah. Big, big fan. If you are alluding to the therapy life and otherwise of getting, uh, the help you need. Yeah. Yeah. That's a proud moment for sure. Heck yeah. Yeah. Well, in the same kind of lieu of things, do you have a best or most memorable piece of advice you've ever received? Hmm. There's so many, but. I try to go by, um, do the best you can with what you have right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all we can do. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. And that is, that is a great reminder that that is all we in fact can do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Very few of us are in fact, you know, Chuck Norris or Rambo or <laughs> MacGyver. You right. know, we can only, you know, use a spoon as a spoon. That's right. Not as a catapult or a rocket launcher. I mean, if you're really creative, I guess, but you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, since bringing up such muscle bound meatheads, if you were to ever take (laughs) part in a WWF styled event, what would you want your walkout song to be? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, I guess like, welcome to the jungle. That's just kind of rowdy, right? Like that's, that gets you amped. (laughs) You seem like somebody who has fun and games. Listen, (laughs) the thing is like, I don't consider myself into games or like very competitive, but I I feel like maybe low key I might be, (laughs) you know? You have done Um, many a feat that would suggest you have it in you to be sure. Oh my goodness. Well... Well, if you don't, if you are sure if you have sports in you, perhaps you have a favorite comic book, book, cartoon that you think would either make the best or worst big screen adaptation. Um, hmm. well, let's see. I, I really liked, like, I guess like Powerpuff Girls, maybe like that could be a thing. Do you think that would make a good one or a bad one? Um, I feel like that's kind of Charlie's Angel-y, though, already, no? I mean, yeah, but a lot more kind of low-key, reducing, taking out the kind of, like, femme fatale element and being a lot more just raucous. I I mess with that, yeah, for sure. Just, like, strong females working together, like, yeah, we can do it. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think... I think 
the only issue that I, I if like it became like an IRL, like, you know, just like live action movie mm-hmm. is so much of it. So much of the beauty for me, I, I'm a through and through Powerpuff Girls fan. Buttercup's my jam. <laughs> she, get, she gets it done. She's she's what I'm about. Nice. But I think that one would kind of I would love to see a new take on it just because I yeah. don't think enough eyeballs ever got to see it. That being said, I feel like that one wouldn't translate as well, which would be what, sad. But. Was it like a, a a movie? Or well, I was just thinking like cartoons. I was like, what cartoons did I like <laughs> Scooby yeah. Doo? Oh, that one's a banger. Yeah, <laughs> Scooby Doo like made a surprisingly school. good live action too. That one was uh, that it one was, was quite decent. acceptable. Yeah, I actually remember the exact day going to see that in theaters. Mm-hmm. Because I was in fourth grade with my best friend <laughs> and her older sister took us. We like took the train to the movies downtown. It was, a, I mean, it was a big deal. So as it should be, as it should be. That's right. Well, perhaps <laughs> when coming out of that movie and your excited revelry, you had a G rated curse word as you were in fourth grade to announce your exclaim of excitement. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Gosh, I don't recall. But I mean, do you have what? Do you have a a, a go to curse word when hanging around the the grandparents or anybody who isn't mm. a fan of such sailory talk? I mean, I I like to, I like to go with good lord. <laughs> Gotta add that extra ooh uh, to it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good <laughs> lord. Or you you know what's fun is like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> Oh, that's a, <laughs> the Midwestern Western-y. classic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bud. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, I love I love the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Now, when, you say, when you say Lord, do you mm-hmm. add, is it A-W or O-R? Do you go Lord or do you go Lord? How's your, uh, how's your a, pronunciation? It, it's definitely like a L-A-W-D. Good yeah. load. Kind of like that. I, yeah. yeah. I like to keep my accents a little ambiguous. <laughs> so where is she from? Uh, she's an know. everywhere gal. Sh- she's been places. <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun. Well, as you've been many places, do you have a favorite myth you like to or find yourself most commonly dispelling? Mm, about places? Places, things, and stuff. Like, for instance, one of my favorite go-to myths to dispel is that Napoleon was short. He was, in fact, average height and or tall, depending upon the region in which he lived at the time, because he was like 5'9", which for older Europe, kind of tall, actually. Huh. Um, okay, come back to me on that one. I can't think of anything. I got you. Hmm. Is there an accomplishment that you are proudest of that you think the fewest people know of that you'd perhaps like to remedy and share more of too? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's think. Hmm. Okay, wait. An accomplishment? An accomplishment. Like a, a personal accomplishment? It can be small, it can be big, it can be raucous, it can be minute. Just one that you're like, I did this. It's awesome that I did this. And just it just <laughs> doesn't come up in conversation. You don't want to showboat. You know, mm-hmm. for me, I was very much raised in a way that it was, you know, if somebody asks, you can tell. But you don't go around being like, by the way, like just like leading conversation. Right. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess. I mean, uh, I guess I'm proud that I. uh <laughs> I played the flute for like six years back in Heck school. Yeah. I, I don't lead with that, but like that no, is pretty that's cool. awesome. That is really cool. That's a really hard instrument. That is one of the few ones that like most people don't realize the difficulty of. So I, I grew up playing band and all that. Right. And yeah. So you're you not it. blowing into an instrument. Like I love brass. I think brass is the tops because I play <laughs> brass, of course, but you're just blowing right. into it. You, you're creating a vacuum with your lips yeah and you're pitching it correctly and you're making noise yeah it's a relatively simple process woodwinds not the same but in a similar kind of echelon but then flute has this weird thing where you're blowing across a surface 
trying to get X amount of sound at a pitch into a thing that is going not the same direction your breath is going. Dang, that's crazy. I uh I I never even thought about it like that. <laughs> that is pretty <laughs> that is pretty incredible. But that was just like a yeah, that was like a random thing I, I just thought of. And you know what else is wild is like uh in my mom's basement, I still like have that flute and I, you know, sometimes I just like wander in there and I was like, oh, I wonder if I can still play this out out of my head, just yeah. completely gone. And I'm like, well, how is that even possible? But I just I like the notes i couldn't remember <laughs> i couldn't remember how to play but at, at one point i did it was pretty oh cool. yeah i know i feel you <laughs> i i look at i look at sheet music these days i played music since i was 10 to oh, when nice. i was 17 right like all year round was about yeah. it was in honor band traveled to like oh very sides. nice yeah like yeah uh, not to in pun intended toot my own horn toot your own horn go do but it yeah <laughs> i can't now read sheet music if i look at it i'm right. like uh like it's foreign <laughs> to me i just like no, I, have, I know i know i know it but i don't know it so i i feel you there. right like how, how does that even work but but I, yeah what I, is I this wizardry it. what is this <laughs> speaking of wizardry what's nice. the silliest non-religious thing you believed as a child that you look back on and giggle at how foolish you were well uh do you mean like the stuff that your parents told you or like, do you mean just like personal beliefs? <laughs> like what, what, whatever you thought was true as a kid, like for well, instance, yeah, you know, okay. some people are like Santa Claus is real. Other people mm. are like there's werewolves, you know, just like it, it's yeah. a, it's a broad range of absurdity. Right. So I asked because I'm still very much like a spiritual, whimsical person. So I believe <laughs> a lot of stuff but oh, yeah. um yeah i think i mean what like comes to mind is the classic like my dad telling me the the light can't be on in the car when you're driving yes. you get arrested yo right yes. like that was very Shut convincing up, and i mean still, i'm gonna I'm steer like, us off the road because i can't see no you won't you're fine. i'm like wait is is that real though <laughs> like, can't, i still like i'm like can i have the light on while i'm I, mean, I just want so to know who, where that idea came from because it's right. such obvious bullshit as an adult. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, no fucking way is that a thing. Definitely believed that one, though. Definitely. Unless your defroster's not working. If your defroster's not working and you've got a lot of icicles on your windshield, maybe then light refracts and, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Listen. <laughs> yeah, sans I that, I, I call I call horse hockey for sure. <laughs> Wait, is that your favorite? Um, that's a it's a good one. It's one I actually have not used in a long time. I don't know where that came from, but I'm. I, I don't think I've heard that one. I I really like that horse yeah, hockey. Nice. Horse hockey. I, I, I think might, I uh, stole that from Mash. I might places. steal that from you because that's Please good. Do. Yeah, it's a thank you. Good. <laughs> well, perhaps you can share something that I can steal from you. What's your favorite oh. meal to make just for yourself, assuming cost and time don't really mm -hmm. matter? Okay. Um. So. I mean, I I like to make just like a grilled um, salmon and then some rice, keep it simple, or just any, like grill any type of veggies. Really just anything on the grill is a, a pretty good time, I think. But like shish kebabs, <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Kebabs, yeah. Yeah, too. you know what I mean? Just like fresh grilled yeah seasoned as yeah. they have to be. like summer food right <laughs> yeah yeah what would that you one. say is your biggest everyday temptation mm. can you give so, an example like for me my biggest everyday temptation is like stopping and getting a milkshake on the way home like when i go mm. to work there's a burger place that i know has banging milkshakes nice it's barely even an exit it's right there the cost isn't even too bad and it's just perfect oh for, that's yeah for other people i have a friend who for the longest time it was literally a problem in his marriage was playing <laughs> there was a video game that he would just get very addicted to oh, and it, it was like an everyday thing and like yeah it was it was it caused got, strife yeah. in his marriage well I, understandable um okay i totally know so my mine would be like getting a lavender latte 
because oh my god i'm just i'm addicted to them and i'm just like i i want to find the best lavender lattes like all over this city or anywhere i travel i literally look up like lavender lattes near me but here in chicago it's so expensive like i I can't afford it (laughs) i can't afford to spend like 10 bucks on a lavender latte on the daily right right but like i would if i could (laughs) yeah yeah so if you're ever around i could tell you where like my top three lavender lattes are where, where are your favorite lavender lattes for our Chicago listeners? All right. Uh, I'm going to go with Necessary and Sufficient Coffee. Uh, this is in Logan Square on uh, Wrightwood. Bang in lavender latte. All right. What's your last or most memorable dream you've had? Oh, my God. Just last night. I, I don't know what's going on, but it was like every ex I've ever had just made an appearance. <laughs> I, I don't know why but they, they like and it wasn't bad but they just like all were there like not together but i would wake up <laughs> and then go back to sleep and i'd be like no shit are you kidding me go back it's to like sleep. the dream equivalent of that netflix show to all the boys I ever kissed or whatever i mean i haven't seen that one but like i, oh I haven't God. seen it either it's just in name it just sounds like good. the kind of like equivalent to their own. good lord good lord, <laughs> good lord. yes yeah, that was random uh <laughs> that i don't is, know what that's that is about super random Isn't were it? you more like this is weird or were you more kind of like freaked out uh no i was just like lol i don't know moving, <laughs> moving on let's see who pops up next what <laughs> <laughs> excited to fall back to sleep yeah, to see who's like, next, see. On yeah, who's the next... <laughs> yeah. who's the it. next uh guest on this one? Oh, it's just so random i don't know what that was about couldn't tell you do you have a favorite poor man luxury you still enjoy this to this day oh my gosh poor man luxury hmm if you would like an example, I have one hot and ready, so to speak. What's that? Oh, like the buffet? Uh, well, I mean, that's a, that's a great choice. <laughs> uh, but mine is uh, pigs in a blanket. Like the food? Yeah. Oh. Uh, mm. It's one of those things that even when you're broke as shit, you can find like $3 in the seat cushions. Go buy a thing oh. of your favorite wieners. Oh, and, yeah. you know, yeah. some croissant and just pop in the old oven and just have yourself a merry little evening oh my goodness well i mean i i I got i gotta go with you know like a frozen pizza i mean it's so easy so easy which brand though listen (laughs) are you a tombstone tommy are you a uh DiGiorno david You know, probably your... whatever is cheapest to be honest if we're going with that <laughs> Tombstone one Tombstone Tommy what is I, whatever is on sale however I've been trying to avoid dairy lately so it's like kind of interfering with my uh... <laughs> for sure for sure with my with my broke boyness <laughs> I think there is dairy just to help you make good bad decisions nice, uh, nice. I believe there are I want to say the company Amy's that makes predominantly vegan and vegetarian stuff yeah i yep, want to yep. say they do pizzas okay and i wouldn't be surprised if they do it with like a non-dairy cheese as they are like very vegan and vegetarian friendly yeah listen i i tried to be vegan for like a month last two, two <laughs> months ago and i felt great in my body but like it is um it is a lot to think about and i'm not sure if it was for me so yeah I'm I'm just trying to figure it out. It's a All difficult right. and tasteless existence for sure. <laughs> Some shade they, tossed they, that way. Uh, they have like cauliflower pizza, which is good, but it's so easy to burn. Oh, too quick. The easiest. You know, in for an extra right? three seconds. Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> yeah, had yeah, it. Yeah. I've had it a time or two. I burned it every time. It was like looking oh, good. All right, I'll get the right. uh, I'll get the mitts to pull it out, and it's on fire. Fuck. Yeah. Like, no, like so quick. But I feel like it could be good. But you really gotta just be on top of it. And listen, we're all just trying to do the best we can with what we have. So. <laughs> with our frozen <laughs> cauliflower pizza. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Circling back, have you thought Circle of a back. favorite myth you'd like? that you normally find yourself most commonly dispelling? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, no worries. Okay. 
lastly, before we throw it to a commercial break, if you could have listeners of this podcast hear one song of your choosing, which would it be? All right. I'm going to go with Wildflowers by Trampled by Turtles. Great band name. But um, it's a great song. It's a cover, but it's really beautiful. So check it out. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. With that, we're going to throw it to our first break. Feel free to stick cool. around and enjoy this totally real commercial. Nice. Or take a minute to enjoy Wildflowers by Trampled by Turtles. Or if you really wanted to hear a song from a previous episode, check out the playlist on Spotify, Passion of People, Preposterous Thieves podcast, Song Rex. It's a long title, I know. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a link in the description. <laughs> Either way, see you in a bit. Do you ever find yourself doing a mundane activity with nothing to keep you from gouging your eyes out or sticking a pencil through one ear and out the other? Uh-huh. Well, then perhaps I could introduce you to music. Music comes in a variety of different types, flavors, and colors. Theorists say that it's the best thing to introduce to your life since food. So go out and get some and make your life just a little bit more bearable. Well, welcome back, everyone. <laughs> so I am here with Martina. And uh, Martina, what is the passion that you've got with you today? Hey, um, so... The thing I'm passionate about right now. Yeah. Yeezum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, slacklining. Slacklining. Beg your pardon? Slacklining. <laughs> <laughs> what that there be? What that there be? What I, what I tell you. Um, so slacklining is, if you've ever seen at the park, people trying to balance between two trees um, on some webbing, that's a slackline. Um. Like a line me. that is neither taut nor on the ground. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's not like a um, it's it's not like a tight rope because that is uh, like solid. This one mm. actually like wobbles, right? So you're trying to keep your balance and walk across it, and it's it's a uh, it's, it's moving. <laughs> yeah. When did you first get introduced to this? So, um, this was towards the end of 2021. And, um, I was walking my dog in this park that I frequent and, uh, I look over and there's all these people like juggling LED clubs, a slack line, like people doing acro yoga, which is like partner yoga. It just looked like a vibe. And I was like, mm. yo, what is this? And they were like, <laughs> you want to come learn how to juggle? And I was like, no, not really. I want to hop on that slack line, though. And um, it took me a week to work up the courage to go back. But I did. And those are some of my closest friends now. And I have my own slack line now. And um, I even got on a freaking Highline just in the last month, which is, I mean, <laughs> rowdy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what all goes into, uh, like, obviously it would be like basic as shit to say like, oh, you just put your feet on the line and then you just <laughs> walk forward. What are some of the things that go into doing slack gliding? Um, yeah. As someone who's started relatively recently, I mean, like, Two years is a long time, and it's also, you know, yesterday. Right. So, like, what what was your experience going from that looks cool to actually doing it? Yeah. Um, well, I I mean, I, I'm I'm a pretty like willing person if I really want to do something. So I just got right up in there, but had a really great like encouraging guide to just be like, yeah, just take a step. You pretty much just put one foot on it. And then you kind of bring your arms up above your head. And what I was told to do is find like a fixed steady point, right? To look at. And then you just kind of like put your arms down, push yourself up. Right. <laughs> do you, do, are you seeing it? <laughs> uh, yes. And no. <laughs> yes. And no. Right. So uh, what I was told is like, just, just try to get on the line and try not even taking a step. Just, just get on there and feel it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you just like, go in too hot, try to start walking. It's, it's going to be all over the place, but I just tried to stand first and, uh, it's really hard. <laughs> How many times did you, uh, eat poo before you got it to do? Oh my gosh. 
listen, so many bruises, um, <laughs> <laughs> so many bruises. I mean, it just, it, it, I couldn't even tell you. It just, it just took coming back every week, coming back, coming back. Um, but you should have seen my highline bruises. <laughs> oh my God. I looked ill. Like I looked like someone, <laughs> so I look like my you whole, looked like you're in a bad relationship. <laughs> oh no. Like actually people are like blink twice, you know, like if you're not like, okay, like it's truly, but, uh, that's just that, like going after it over and over yeah, and yeah. over and over. And yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's a balance sport, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's got to get that inner stillness. Yes. Um, and, um, the how, most so, important, yeah, go ahead. So, so for the people that don't know, how wide is the line mm -hmm. on average? Yeah. Is it, is it like pretty thin or is it like surprisingly right. thick? How, how much are we working with here? Yeah. So, um, the slack line, the thing that, uh, you're most likely to see like at the park between the two trees, uh, is two inches. That's, that's a two inch line. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is also just the same type of, if you've ever had like a, a pickup truck and moved stuff and you have to strap it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, a, and a ratchet. It's essentially that, but just like around trees and you use tree protectors. Awesome. Yeah. So if that makes a little more sense and then you progress to, uh, the, the high lines or the park lines, which are one inch and di a different type of webbing and, um, those hurt <laughs> way more <laughs> but it's yeah does that make sense yeah yeah okay <laughs> so you're doing that it's taking you weeks to not just like you know go caterwauling to the ground how yes. long did it take you where you could before you could like walk from one end to the other without falling down oh my god listen i only walked my first like entire uh little slack line i think this was like last week outside my house awesome yeah yeah so i'm not i'm not saying i'm like great or like can walk really long lines because i can't yet but i just like i want to keep trying and yeah, i want to But like more yeah. importantly is yeah. that and i think the beauty of this is that you're having fun doing this mm -hmm. without like magnificent success oh, you are yeah, enjoying no. the process of oh, failure yeah. and yeah. that i think is like a testament to a a great and like loving passion is when it's not Oh yeah, you know, I went out there and I was a natural, so I love it. It's like, wow, that's <laughs> fucking inspiring. Right. It's like, no, I went out there and I sucked at it for two oh, years, yeah. but I was like, this is dope, and just continued to just eat shit. I'm like, that's yes. awesome. Absolutely, you got it. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly it. Uh, yes, yes, that's it. And and it it just gives you like something to to strive towards. Um, you know, and then. I've met some really super duper dope people through doing this, which is kind of the other best part. Yeah. 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 But it's the most important part, whether you're on a, a slack line or a, a high line is your breath. It's to just breathe, to not mm. try and hold your breath. And, you know, cause then you're uh, more stiff and like, you want to be able to kind of bounce with the line. That's going to be to your advantage. So the one with the line. Uh-huh. They're like, listen, all you got to do is breathe. And I'm like, hey, don't we all just need that reminder sometimes? I was really hoping your response was, hey, don't tell me what to do. Oh, my God. No, that is definitely <laughs> me. Oh, my God. And it's, it just don't make sense. All my you friends do like, is breathe and eat food. You're like, shut up. Don't, don't tell, me, tell me what, hey, don't <laughs> tell me what to do. That, yeah, that's literally like my friend. We were biking the other day to this climbing festival. He's like, get, Martina, like you're in the crosswalk, like get, get out of the road. And I was like, don't tell me what to do. He's like, dude, the car is, you're, they're going to hit you. I'm like, don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> Goofball. I'm a goof. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So what would you, I know this is still a relatively reinventing process and experience for you but mm -hmm. what would your dream involvement with slacklining look like or what would you want it to amount to do you is there a kind of a goal and is something you are, are aspiring to in that regard yeah i i, I want to walk a high line <laughs> what, i would, what I would did, like to walk a high line different what, what's different mm -hmm. between a high line and a slack line for those of us yeah. not in the know 
Okay. So um, a high line is anything that like, if you were to fall off of it, you would die. So you have, it's so <laughs> high up. Mm-hmm. You have to be harnessed into a high line. Yeah. And they, uh, I mean, people set them up like up in the mountains. Mm, okay. Between, between, hold on, hold on. I don't know if I'm explaining this well. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, it's like between like two cliffs and stuff like that, or like a, mm-hmm. in like a like a chasm, so, so something where there's room for you to be able to fall and for it to yeah. for you to kind of swing and like have distance. Yeah, yeah. So like balancing up high and exposed between rock formations or canyons, it's you could do it between like two buildings downtown too if you're like really rowdy. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's just like I want to just. Well, first of all, stand up on a high line <laughs> and and walk a high line. Um, that's what I would like to do. And also to just share this yeah. rowdy sport with others because it's it's a little extreme, but it's <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What yeah. would you say is the biggest misconception? about slacklining, highlining, or even tightrope walking by the wider world that you've come across or maybe thought yourself before getting into it? Um, hmm. Let's see. I mean, it is definitely, like, intimidating, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, wait, what, sorry, what was the question again? The biggest what, m- misconception. Like, what? what is something that either you had before like getting into this activity or other people have had when you've told them about this that you're just like well you're wrong yeah um maybe just that it's like impossible or inaccessible when in reality this is like such um it's such an accessible community because everyone's so open and welcoming and find any slackliners they're they're like the coolest kindest people ever they're gonna invite you onto their line like get up there it doesn't like if you look silly or goofy or i don't know how like nobody knows how when they first try (laughs) but it's that's the point it's just to be like silly and goofy like we're doing this weird thing like you know like just it's not that serious like get on up there yeah yeah probably that like if you see any slackliners don't be intimidated like it's a very cool easy kind crowd <laughs> so when you go out slacklining mm-hmm. how, how long do you generally spend doing that is this like an activity where you'll go out and do it for like half an hour and then be done or like what, what's your kind of average slacklining experience look like <laughs> yeah um well on wednesdays uh we meet every week in chicago at north pond this is like slackline chicago so, mm-hmm. and that's like for 5 p.m. through sunset. It's the whole afternoon. We're out nice. there. Yeah. And there's all different types of lines where like kids can hop on with like the easier ones and training lines. And then there's park lines, the kind of longer, harder ones. So that's Wednesdays. Saturdays, um, usually spend also the whole afternoon in the park <laughs> doing that. We set up kind of out, out on the water um, at the harbor at Belmont Harbor. Um, So, I mean, when it's with other people, it could be all afternoon, but I'll also go and set up my, my line, like just right in front of the house for an hour or two, you know what I mean? Mm. So, so it just depends. Um, I also went to like a festival, like a slack lining festival. So that was just all day, all night, if you wanted it to be. So when you're doing slacklining in a public space, how mm-hmm. much like sharing kind of taking turns is there? Is there like enough lines where, or you can like share a line with people that it's like not like you can kind of go indefinitely or is it, you know, you've had your moment, let somebody else play kind of thing. Oh, you definitely let, you know, others play. Cause it's, it's all about just kind of like, you know, sharing that joy and having maybe like newcomers experience it as well. But, um, how I was saying with those meetups, like with Slackline Chicago, for example, um, so many people just like end up showing up and setting up their lines. There's usually a whole bunch of lines. So of all different degrees. So there's usually more 
than enough, but it's, it's most okay, certainly so you like, spend, you spend more time on the line than not basically. Um, no, not necessarily. Like okay. it, it is, it's, it's, I guess it's the intention behind it, but like, <laughs> I'll bring my, I brought my line to this thing called full moon jam the other day, which is like a fire spinning more so event. Right. But I set mm -hmm. up my line, but like I knew kids would be interested and there was mostly just like a whole bunch of shorties hopping on the line and being so stoked about it. And like, I wasn't really on there, but I was by it, you know, kind of guiding kids with like my shoulder and my hand. That's what Aww. it's all about. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's all about. Like, you That's never so know that could like, it, it, it just, that encouragement and like feeling like that, that whole, oh, oh, I'm capable of this. Like I just did that. Like that can shift a lot of things for a kid, for yourself. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, if that's not it, I, I'm curious <laughs> to know what's your favorite non-obvious aspect of slacklining. What's something that, you know, yeah. most people don't realize or, you didn't realize that you're just like, oh, this is so cool. Why didn't anybody tell me about this? Oh, it's absolutely 100% the, the encouragement from everyone around you. I've never experienced this in, in anything else in my life. Like everyone's rooting for you. Like, yeah, go Martina. Like the stoke is so high just <laughs> to support your like fellow human being. It, I, it's rad. I mean, truly, it's 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 a wonderful, incredible community. So it's got to be that part. <laughs> it's got to yeah, be that part. It, it sounds like self betterment meditation meets like, yeah, like race walking or something like that. You don't care about beating the person as much as you no. like want your like better time or you're like, you're like, you know, better experience. Yeah, you want it's... to improve yourself. Yeah. But so much of it is like kind of almost internal as opposed to external. Yeah. The, um, kind of what you're describing is called like a, a, a personal record. So, mm -hmm. you know, like everyone has their own, like, um, like I said, when I went to this festival, mine was like, I just want to get on a high line. Like just <laughs> get on one. I not even stand or walk at all. Just like, what does it feel like to be out there? And I freaking did, dude. What? Ooh. So I know, I know. Um, so like that could be a personal record. But then once you start walking things, it could be to go even longer or you know higher to this place. I guess. Do you know is what I mean? A, is that a pretty common like trend to go from slacklining to highlining, or do some? Yes, stay that's at, the okay. progression. I mean, well, it doesn't have to be, but like, it, yeah, I think <laughs> once you feel that out, you're like, oh my God, I want to do yeah, it's, this. It's like but... t yeah, it's not like t-ball to baseball, but it's kind of like, yeah. like jogging to running or whatever. Like yeah, 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 I think that's it. Um, but it's, it's all about just like encouraging one another in that. That's so I'd awesome. Say. It is pretty freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are there professional slackliners? Is this like yes. enough of a sport that it becomes an occupation for some? Yeah. 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 And um, I actually had like this super fangirl moment. Um, nice. Let me tell you about it. There's this uh, athlete. Well, she's a prof professional highliner. Her name is Faith Dickey. And she's like one of the OG highliners. Okay. Mm-hmm. She has free soloed high lines, which means like walking them without a harness, which I'm not like promoting or anything, but she's, she, she's beat like records, uh, for women, you know, doing high lining and she's done it in high heels. And I'm like, you're a fucking badass, Just That's like, rad. check, yeah. So listen, so then, uh, I don't know. I just like saw her Instagram story and I was like, Oh, where's this spot? I don't know. I just reach out to people and she replied and I was like, Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> and then she friended me and I was like, Oh my God. And like, we got to talk and, but you know, she, like everyone's just a human being, I think that do really incredible things, but like, yeah, yeah. you know, but she was like, Oh yeah, come to my like women's highline, uh, gathering that's uh, over in like, Czech Republic, which I don't think I can make it this year, but I was like, oh my God, like this is so dicky. I called all my friends, they're like, dude, do you realize? And I was like, no, no, like I do, I know, I know, like that's crazy. But, but it's because I heard her 
on a podcast that I, I really like. And I was like, damn, like she's so real and just like badass. And like, yeah. I want to do that. And that's kind of why I like agreed to even do this. Cause I was like, you never Aww, know. Like, yeah. yeah, I do. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> cool. Dope people doing dope things. Thanks for doing this podcast. I don't know. It's it's yeah, all of it is dope. Shout out you. Faith Dickey for being a inspiration to women <laughs> to do really cool stuff. So you said <laughs> you said there was a record involved. What what goes into the sport of highlining? What is is it like a race? Is it like tricks? What I I can't quite wrap my head around how you would score something like that. Mm, um. So there's all types of, okay, so I'm not as uh, well-versed in highlining just yet because I'm, again, told you, like, I just got my first one and I haven't yeah. done much, but there is all types. My friends do, like, trick trick highlining, so that's more like you literally do, like, tricks on it, okay? Mm. Um, and then there's, I think, more so where you're doing it for, like, length, you know? Like, how yeah. long can I walk? But it it takes, like... um you know, you got to have people and the gear and the spot and, and setting something up like that is, uh, it's a whole mission. Yeah. So let's see. Very Tom Cruise to be sure. <laughs> Something like that. It came out of, um, climbing, like mm. highlining came out of climbing. If that gives you any sort of idea. Um, let's see. I'm trying to look it up. Personal record for a height in the Swiss Alps. 4,000 feet. Sorry, pause. I should have researched this. My no, you're, you're totally fine. <laughs> 60, uh, 67 meters was the record, I guess, for men. This oh, is like she said the, without falling. I guess so, yeah. Let's see. I, I just, um, yeah. Female world record for highlining length that. 315 feet, 96.5 meters. Yeah. So it's just kind of extremes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's, um, I just think it's rad to like do it at all and push limits. And, and it's, yeah. it's overcoming your own fear. Cause it like so much of slacklining is your own mental blocks. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And just like repeating to yourself, just like, you know, I can do this. I got this. And over and over and like just taking the next step and taking the next step, you know? All about taking the next step. Yeah. So it's kind of like transferable in life too. <laughs> <laughs> you just breathe and just the next step and just the next step, you know? Some good life lessons in there. Yeah, well, this ADD mind, I need like a, I need that, you know? Well, if that's something you need, perhaps we can talk about something you don't need. All right. What, my friend, is your preposterous peeve? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I really just, well, my, my preposterous peeve would be when people stand like way too close to you in the grocery store. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. Like back it up, bud. I mean, what, it's not. What is gonna... your preferred distance? What, well, what, is the, what is the distance that is acceptable? I mean, like a like a nice like a nice three to four feet. Like oh I, wow! I don't know. I just yeah. I like... you're, you really are a midwesterner. I love it. I like my own. I like my own little bubble. Like like. I would like a hovel that I could set in between myself uh, and you. It's just, I just, it's like, it's not going to make the line go faster. If you're breathing down my neck, sir or madam, please. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> when did you first notice this being an issue? Oh my God. Forever and always. I think so maybe. In the store with mom in the stroller and you're just like, back it up. It's, it's definitely, it, it definitely, I think originates from Poland, which is where I was born and am from. Cause that's there's like so funny. no personal space there. Yeah. I was going to say all. that that's so funny that like you started, cause I know in Europe and in my experiences <laughs> yep. in Europe, they yep. are like, it is like back to back and you're just like, bro, I'm, can you? And they're like, there's, I'm we're in you. barely a continent. Like there's no yeah. space. I like, can't do it. 
And, and no, so I'm, that's yeah. interesting. You start <laughs> off in a place where there isn't any, and that's where it originated. Most people get over that, and you're like, this ain't for me. And the yeah, second you have yeah. personal space, you're like, forever. Forever this. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go all the way to the personal space and go <laughs> off on a high line, and but like, no one, no one can be behind me. No. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I just, yeah, just give me, give me a little space, jeez, please. <laughs> Do you have a story of when this shone the boldest, or you kind of had like a kind of a a tiff with somebody and breathing down your neck? Oh well, I mean. I- I won't say anything, but I'll stank face you. Like, like <laughs> I, I'll, I'll turn around and I'll just, I'll give you like a side eye. And usually people <laughs> become aware they're a little too close. Is that mean? I don't no. know. What up? You're asserting your, you're asserting your personal. Like, if you were like, if you turn around and like punch somebody, you're like, yo, no. too close. Like obviously it's too far. But to like uh. give somebody the side eye or stank, it's like, Oh yeah. The only way they know that that happened is if they were looking at you. And then if they're looking at you, one of two things happened. One, they should have been more cognizant than they weren't. And now they know. Right. Or two, they're a serial killer. And then you gave them the what for in the nonverbal <laughs> sense. You know, both these things are good. I'm a fan. Like, listen, I, like I am from Chicago. Like I'm not, I, I'm not scared. Like I'll, I'll, I'll look, I'll look at you. I'll let you know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not scared. No, I'll look dude. at you. No, no. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And usually people become cognizant, but like, gosh, gosh, dang. I don't know where you live, but like, maybe people are just a little more mellow. Uh, I live in LA, so no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Just, uh, just the Chicago comes out of me sometimes. Like I have no problem giving you a stink face. Like back it up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, as Martina gets the Chicago back in herself, we're gonna head to our second ad break. But don't go anywhere because when we get back, Martina's gonna enter the lightning round. Oh my god, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> Having trouble staying awake? Oh yeah. Wish you'd followed your dream so you had the give a crap necessary to meet your deadlines. Oh, definitely. Are you likely to be fired the second another warm body walks through that door and asks your boss for an application? I mean, probably. Would you prefer to keep this shit sack of a job instead of explaining to Susan that you've been fired? I mean, I guess. Well, then let me introduce you to caffeine. Caffeine is a highly addictive substance that'll keep you jittery and energized to do any fucking stupid task for hours. Uh, that sounds like drugs. It is. Aren't drugs illegal? Not this one. So next time you feel like sitting on the sidewalk instead of at your desk, reach for a caffeine. Wait, you didn't tell me where I can buy it. Because it's mother loving everywhere, you blind Neanderthal. And we're back. <laughs> Martina, are you ready to enter? The Lightning Round. I think I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Buckle your seatbelts and keep your arms inside the ride at all times. Martina, is there a price for you to give up your passion forever? No. Make the food or do the dishes? Oh, God. Um, Make the food. (laughs) Did you ever cheat on us in school? Oh, fuck yeah. Heck yeah. Would you rather have your inner monologue sound like Gilbert Gottfried or Fran Drescher? I don't know either of those people. (laughs) <laughs> pineapple on pizza or fist fight? Oh, I love pineapple on pizza. You're having the best day of your life. What happens next? Another amazing thing or something terrible? Oh, amazing. Keep the amazing going. Is professional wrestling cool or lame? I don't like violence. I'm a hippie at heart. <laughs> Are soups smoothies? I, I suppose. Do you create your own thoughts or do you just listen to them? Uh create them i think <laughs> oh god album shuffle or playlist mm, playlist is there such a thing as a perfect piece of art to the artist probably have you ever had a crush on a cartoon character uh yeah yeah johnny bravo <laughs> <laughs> quick oh my god where'd that come from wow okay (laughs) are you out of touch or is the children who are wrong well maybe a little bit of both and (laughs) what is more important freedom or structure freedom 
Would you rather have tentacle arms or kangaroo legs? Mm, I think kangaroo legs would be good for slacklining. <laughs> <laughs> no internet ever again, or the internet streams directly into your brains at all times. No internet ever again, 100%. <laughs> Would you rather be a human in a world of Muppets or a Muppet in a world of humans? Huh. Huh. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the second one? <laughs> Would you rather meet an extraterrestrial or a ghost? Oh, that's hard. I mean, I'd do both, but maybe maybe extraterrestrial right now. That's what I'm going with. Would you rather have squeaky clown shoes for feet or a clown nose for a nose? Uh, probably nose. The other one would be fucking irritating. Oh, excuse my language. Sorry. <laughs> I can't. I get so overstimulated with sounds. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Schrodinger's cat, alive, dead, or both? Who? Schrodinger's cat. Who's that? Alive, dead. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like that American. Sorry. I don't, <laughs> I don't know I'm what not that, that American. Is. That's the best answer. Is Sorry. What that is. Are hot dogs tacos? Well, listen, all about perspective. <laughs> it's all about perspective. If it is to you, that's okay. Could be. <laughs> no. Oatmeal or cereal? Oatmeal. Do you think you could eat 37 of your favorite food for $5,000 in a one-hour time limit? Probably. Congratulations, you've survived the lightning round! Oh, oh my gosh, we did the dang thing. Now, before we move on, I, like many listeners at home, would like to now know, what is your favorite food that you could eat 37 of for five, 37 of in a one hour time level for $5,000? Uh, oysters. <laughs> oh, yeah, that definitely. 37. Oysters. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Keep them coming. That That's sounds like, what, like three a three orders of oysters. Listen, That's nothing. That sounds just like a pleasant afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, as a reward, my gallivant guest, I grant thee a lightning round question. Of your own to be echoed till the end of time or we get bored of it. <laughs> oh, what should I get... like question B? Okay. All right. So if you could go to a music festival on the moon, would you do it? No. Really? I don't really enjoy music festivals. I, I'm, I'm going to get really old Manny. That's they're funny. loud. They're cramped. It's all sweaty. Oh, no. I, I completely that. agree with you. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. But like, I, I'd probably check it out if it was on the moon also also i'm scared of getting in a rocket like i guess it would depend if they like fixed you know space travel to the point where it was like getting on a bus no like, but that's that what i mean safe if it was yeah, like you're, I mean, like, you're there, driving in your car okay like, it's like hopping in your car if you could just like hop over to the moon like for a i don't know just, just there's the funny different. thing it loses its <laughs> I, I love it, it makes me happier and less interested because now it's safe. Uh, okay. And so there's right, like the right. less intrigue, <laughs> but also well, I don't like I still don't like music festivals. And now I, I like the idea it. of something Fine. being on the moon. No, I, I love it, though. It's got I love that my brain does it two different ways for the same thing. On one side, it's like if it's humdrum, mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever. I don't want to go because I don't like music festivals. On right. the other side, I'm like an old man who's like, oh, I might die in space. It's safer to stay on the floor. Oh, God. Damn I mean, I just, I feel like it'd be a cool view of like Earth from up there. And then you could be like, oh, I went to, uh, you know, that uh, moon festi. Were you, I don't know. <laughs> so but that would, that would be like the equivalent of like, I went to Reno or, you know, something like that. I've like, never if been to Reno. Not yet. Uh, you are not missing out on much, even though I do find it, that city quite fine. It seems, it seems hot. Like it real, is, it's not as hot. hot as Vegas. I, I did not care for Vegas. I passed through there on my road trip. Like, oh <laughs> fuck me, that was I hated. Yeah, that was the worst. That sounds <laughs> like, like <laughs> something you would enjoy. You probably yeah. would like going to Reno, not for Reno, but because it's close to Tahoe. I, would, I get the, I would I get love the vibe to to that you would, you would fuck with Tahoe. I would love to check it out one day. Yeah, well, cool. Uh, <laughs> well, as this has been one lovely day and we're coming to a close here, is there anything that you want to plug, shout outs you'd like to give, places people can find you or your content? Yeah, sure. Um, my Instagram is Martina Macy and it'll be tagged, I, I have heard. Um, I'd also like to plug Slackline Chicago if you're in the Chicago area um, or passing through and want to see what it's all about uh that one and then um 
Oh, I'll also plug my friend Yoga on the Beach in Chicago, which we set up cyclines after. So you should check that out. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Martina. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, thank you, Martina, for being my guest today. And a special thanks are due to my editor, Richard Ashford, and my composer, Joshua Gibbons. And thank you. Yes, you, listening at home, or you found time to appreciate this. Time is the most precious commodity we have, and I appreciate you spending years with us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, or just share with a friend. Every little bit helps. Or if you already have and are out of episodes to listen to, don't worry. We put out a new episode every Monday at midnight on SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. A passionate people and preposterous peace podcast. And a very special thanks are due to our patrons, Sabelle Yellow. And if you'd like to join said illustrious ranks and have your names read aloud, just head on over to patreon.com backslash passionate people and preposterous peeves podcast. And remember, folks, if days are numbered and songs are sung, at the end of the day, I think we've all won. So please stick around, because great things have only just begun. <laughs>